Welcome everyone, my name is Corey Allen and this is the Overton Report. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. I hope not many of you had to deal with somebody spouting off revisionist history at the dinner table. And I hope that if they did that you uh, took great pleasure in correcting their absurdities <laughs> as we always do here at, here at my home. It was a nice little break and I wanted to kind of jump right back into it because uh, over the course of the past couple of weeks, the mainstream media in South Carolina has gone to great lengths to denigrate parents all over the state uh, and also myself. I know that while, <laughs> while I'm kind of used to it because it's been a couple of years now, I know it can be a little nerve-wracking and anxiety-inducing when uh, somebody who's not used to it, a parent or just a normal citizen, is uh, is being called names or you know called a radical right wing extremist um, by name in the newspaper for all the people to see without any uh, recourse or way to way to fight back against that false narrative. I know I know it can be a little anxiety inducing. For us, it's just kind of funny because because there are a couple of things you have to understand. Well, first off, as far as I go, none of them reach out to me. None of them ask me questions, none of them care to know what I believe or why I believe what I believe. And I, and I, and I can understand that. They don't want to contact me because they know that I won't let them take little bites out and misrepresent my point. Uh, and they also know that I can express my point using their weaponized jargon uh, and they wouldn't get any use out of it. So they just like to take my name and run with it. It's fun times, fun times. Um, so while that has been happening in Berkeley County, in Charleston County, Pickens County, uh, Colleton, a few other places, I want to zero in on Beaufort County. Now, in Beaufort County, a friend of ours, she has done some extensive research, okay? And some of you might have heard about this. 96 books. She found 96 books that she asked the school to review under the school's review process, the school district in Beaufort County. Nothing wrong with that. She has a list of all of them, all of their names, everything. When that list came out and the school district agreed to take them out and review them out of the school libraries. Now, one of the ways that the left will like to gaslight you is they'll say, you know, they're trying to take these books out of the library. But they forget to tell you that they're literally school libraries where only children go only children okay they sit in a public library where there's an adult section okay these are libraries meant for minors so let's throw that red herring right out the window immediately shall we cool the ACLU and the, uh, the just the the random housewife lefties in the Beaufort County area went crazy went crazy I guarantee you they didn't look at the list of books I mean why would they um, the newspaper the Post and Courier reported on it and the uh, Island Packet and all of the local corporate media outlets in the area also reported on it but not one of them not one linked to the books because this is how it always goes this is how it always goes if we show you the specific books, you'll be on our side. You will say, with at least a majority of them, yeah, no, that probably shouldn't be in a child's library. You know, graphic scenes of rape, incest, child molestation, not just references to it, graphic. They don't want to link you to that. They want to talk vague. They want to be very vague when they talk about it. They're banning books. No, we're not. We're asking for books, certain books, that are extremely explicit and should not be given to minors because it's extremely traumatic and these kids have no idea what they're getting into. We're asking for those books to no longer be in a child's library. That's what our side is actually saying. Let's get that straight. But when the media discusses it, they're very vague. Just 96 books. 
and allow the low info folks to just use their imagination. We're not talking about legitimate literature. We're not. And actually, most of the books that we're talking about, well, adults aren't even allowed to read them in a room full of adults who are in charge of allowing them in the schools in the first place. Now, you might have seen this clip uh, on our reels or, or somewhere else, Libs at TikTok, of a mother at the Frisco Independent School District uh, out west reading from one of these books and being lambasted and told, you know, that's inappropriate. It was a, it was a book in her school watch. This one couple stumbled into my room and asked if they could use the room anyway with me still in it. After a few minutes, the boy's hand went up the girl's shirt and she started protesting. He reached to take off her pants, but she started crying really hard. He pulled his pants and underwear down to his knees. Please, Dave, no. The boy pushed the girl's head down and she started to kiss his penis. She was still crying. Finally, she stopped crying because he put his penis in her mouth and I don't think you can cry you. in that position. I ask you why this book Thank has you. survived two attempts. Your time is up. Thank you so much. And there is a, there's a child in our boardroom, so I'd like for you to please stop reading that. <laughs> okay, but that also has happened here in South Carolina and actually it is even worse. So parents in Lexington Richland District 5, Lex Rich 5 for short, uh, they earlier this year went to their school board to read excerpts of some books that were in their children's libraries. Now they were lambasted. They were told that it was inappropriate to read these books out loud in a room full of adults. The same adults who are allowing it and dismissing the parents when they say, we want these out of our schools, right? But on top of that, the school district decided to mute the parents and strike their comments from the official record. Watch this. And there are multiple books and they're all gonna be read. Okay, well, let me just kind of You're making it where nobody wants to send their kids to school anymore. Then you have to worry about what they're picking up at the library. Like, we need to do better. This is not okay. This is currently in our library. I'll skip some of the bad words, but I'll give you a brief little synopsis. Now, this is not anything I want my child to be exposed to. Go ahead, read this pornography. Go ahead, try doing something with him. Try doing something with her. Oh, it's okay if it's a grown-up. It's okay if it's something at camp. So here are some excerpts from some of the books. I know it's hard for you to listen to, but if they're appropriate for our library, they're appropriate for this meeting. Order, yeah, please. yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. This is I in that. the library for our children. Wait a minute. Order. Can I pause my time? Y'all are on my time. No, I'll give it back to you. Here's the thing, though. It only takes one or two of these that we get it. And I'm not saying we're naive that our children are not being exposed to this in any other way, but it should not be in the schools. And it is. Ms. Wright, I don't know since children may be listening to this. I agree, but this yeah. is what you're subjecting our children to, the children of this district. Now, here's the common thread. The school district not only muted their, their words when they're reading from the book, but they muted even when they were telling the titles of the book. Why? Because they don't want the average person to know what the books are so that they cannot read them for themselves. That's the common thread between the school districts, the librarians in the schools, the activists who parade around as teachers, who are really just activists, and the media, and the media. So this is an ongoing problem. You can make anything in the world sound good or bad, whatever your agenda requires, when you speak in vague platitudes. It's a lot more difficult to lie and gaslight the people when you're forced to get into specifics. But getting into specifics is something that, well, the posting courier and the island packet, well, they're not going to get into if it doesn't benefit their power structure 
or their control over the narrative. If it doesn't push the agenda of their particular political and social philosophy, well, don't expect, don't expect specifics, but also don't expect truth. Don't expect nuance, which should be in the news, if it were news and not propaganda, because as far as anyone who reads these articles knows, the parents just pick 94 books at random, they're white supremacist, racist, radical, alt-right extremists, and you should hate them. That's the story. I just saved you a $1.25 or whatever it is. You don't even have to read it. Parents ban books at random and go and want to go and have a bonfire with them. When really it's normal people don't want to traumatize children with extremely graphic depictions of child rape, incest, and molestation. And if you're arguing the opposite of that, you're the bad person. You're the extremist because it was very normal, very normal to want to protect children from that trauma forever, for forever. Unless you were, of course, an evil, hedonistic sociopath. But then, when we're talking about paid journalists and corporate media, I'm just repeating myself. The notion that it's wrong even with a one-year-old is, is not quite obvious to me. Imagine that an adult male uh, wants to have sex with a 12-year-old girl. Imagine that she's a willing participant. A, a very standard, very widely held view that there's something deeply wrong about this. It's not obvious to me that it is in fact wrong. I think this is a mistake. So yeah, I, I guess I think, no, I, I don't think there's a blanket period beyond which this is permissible. There's just lots of activities that children engage in that they don't understand all that well. But no, I, I, don't, I don't think it's blanket wrong at any age. Man, listen, you're talking to a guy who for 25 years has been making arguments more or less in defense of adult child sex in classrooms. So, my advice, go to the school board meetings, read the passages every single time. Force them to discuss the specifics. Because, like I said, when you have media on your side and you have the power structure on your side, you can make anything seem good or bad when you're allowed to speak in vague platitudes. It's a lot harder for them to lie and call you the extremists when you force them into specifics. So force them into defending the specifics. Don't let them get away with their blanket statements and their manipulations of the truth. If you do that, I promise you, we will keep winning. If you give up the ground, we're lost. Keep up the good fight. We got a lot more coming soon. Stay tuned. It's going to take a lot of conservative activism to get it done. To the conservatives out there, it's time to stop thinking of the term activism as a bad word because look at Charleston County, look at Berkeley County, look at Beaufort County, look at Pickens. Anywhere that we implement real and good conservative activism, we're unbeatable. We are unbeatable. So keep it up. We'll talk to you soon. My name's Corey Allen, and this is the Overton Report.